Welcome to week five. As I mentioned early on, I am learning more ways to make our class engaging, and this week I'm going to be introducing a video lecture. When we talk about assessment, I really appreciate what our author says about being culturally sensitive in the assessment process. Remember, assessment is for all children, not just those we suspect may have special needs. Do we approach parents the moment we have a concern? No. Can you imagine how many times we would totally stress parents out unnecessarily? Our first job is to be an investigator. How do we do that? Through observation and assessment. We begin the process, and if our findings warrant further investigation, then we bring the parents into our thought process, but not, not on the first thought. What if parents don't speak English? Hire an interpreter. Don't rely on a young child to interpret the information for the parent. It can put the child in a difficult situation, and there are going to be many words that you might want to introduce in the conference that the young child just won't know how to uh, translate and they may substitute something else for what you intended to say. Check with your local county of office of education for assistance in this area. However, we can't be culturally sensitive if we neglect to get to know the family. Teachers have to take time to get to know the families of the children in their programs, what they view as important, and to help them feel as comfortable as possible long before we have concerns to address. As we look at the assessment process, pay special attention to the guidelines for developmental assessment beginning on page 71 of our text. You will find they overlap with some areas addressed by the National Association for the Education of Young Children's position statement on assessment, which is available on the NAEYC website. Please check that out as well this week. Once you determine further investigation is necessary and you have discussed the situation with the parents, you find you are now part of a team. In most cases, the team approach is a very effective way to gain a great deal of information about the child and the steps that might be necessary to help meet the child's needs. Our text gives an extensive list of the individuals that may be involved in the team. The list, beginning on page 77, is in alphabetical order, certainly not in order of assistant, in, excuse me, in order of importance, because the parents and the family members are listed toward the middle of the list, and that is not where they belong in order of importance. As we progress through this class, some of you may use this information as a regular infant, toddler, or preschool teacher, or a home provider. Others of you may already know you want to concentrate your work um, and your career, in fact, with children who have special needs. This list may give you some ideas of career options. Hopefully, you come away from this week's reading with a better understanding of your role in the assessment and evaluation process. Have a great week.